Slaughter in Gaza and Lebanon as war with Iran approaches. Israel appears to have begun its long-planned ethnic cleansing of northern Gaza, with the IDF dropping bombs, issuing evacuation orders for multiple hospitals, attacking civilians with sniper drones, and besieging civilian populations in order to force tens of thousands of people to either move south or die. Israel has reportedly been dropping leaflets on the Jabalia refugee camp ordering people to leave and then shooting anyone who tries to. Since the 7th of October last year, Israel has committed roughly 100 October 7ths in Gaza. Scores of American medical workers who volunteered in the enclave signed an open letter to President Biden estimating the real death toll from Israel's onslaught at over 118,000. Israel has also committed about two October 7ths in Lebanon during that time, with the majority of the 2,100 Israeli killings in that country coming just in the last few weeks. As Israeli murderousness ramps up in both Gaza and Lebanon, Benjamin Netanyahu has issued a statement addressed to the Lebanese people, telling them that they need to somehow defeat Hezbollah in order to, quote, save Lebanon before it plunges into the abyss of a long war that will lead to destruction and suffering like we see in Gaza. Israeli officials have been saying they're going to destroy Lebanon like they destroyed Gaza for months. Back in December, Israel's defense minister, Yov Gallant, said, Every person in Lebanon can take the map, the aerial photograph of Gaza, place it on an aerial photograph of Beirut, and ask themselves if this is what they want to happen there. Now Netanyahu himself is saying this. Notably, Netanyahu's statement was delivered in English, with English subtitles. This wasn't actually a plea made to the people of Lebanon. It was propaganda made for Western consumption. Netanyahu does not actually believe the Lebanese people are going to take up arms against Hezbollah to stop their country from being destroyed. He's just creating a narrative to justify what he already plans on doing to Lebanon. And the U.S. is encouraging Israel to move forward. On Tuesday, State Department spokesman Matthew Miller told the press that the Biden administration no longer supports a ceasefire with Hezbollah, saying, We support Israel's efforts to degrade Hezbollah's capability instead. Two weeks ago, CNN reported that the administration has also essentially given up on a ceasefire in Gaza. And we haven't even talked about Iran yet. NBC News reports that U.S. military officials have been discussing directly joining in Israel's planned attack on Iran, potentially launching their own airstrikes on the Iranian military whenever Israel begins its attack. Whether the U.S. joins with Israel in its coming attack or not, Iran has already made it clear that it will retaliate against any further aggressions by Israel, And Israel has made it clear that if Iran strikes back, it's going to ramp up its aggressions and perhaps start attacking Iranian energy infrastructure. If this blows up into full-scale war, as looks increasingly likely, it's inevitable that the U.S. will come to Israel's defense. Axios and its Israeli intelligence insider Barak Ravid have a new report out on how super-duper frustrated the Biden administration is becoming with Israeli warmongering. In typical Axios fashion, the outlet reports that the White House is becoming increasingly distrustful of Israel's planned military operations against Iran and Lebanon, but that, in typical Biden administration fashion, its sources admit that the U.S. would very likely help Israel defend itself regardless of whatever happens. Whoever wins the U.S. election in November appears to be committed to riding with Israel down this path into the depths of hell. In an interview with 60 Minutes, Vice President Kamala Harris defended the Biden administration's genocidal support for Israel, saying the weapons it has been giving them allow Israel to defend itself. She also named Iran as the number one enemy of the United States. In an appearance on The View, Harris was asked what she would have done differently from President Biden, and she said, there is not a thing that comes to mind. Then later she added, you asked me what is the difference between Joe Biden and me, That would be one of the differences. I'm going to have a Republican in my cabinet. And lest you make the mistake of thinking Trump would be any better, last week the former president said that Israel should attack Iran's nuclear facilities and criticized the Biden administration for not being sufficiently aggressive on this front. They asked Biden, 
What do you think about Iran? Would you hit Iran? Trump said at a campaign event on Friday. And he goes, as long as they don't hit the nuclear stuff. That's the thing you want to hit, right? I said, I think he got that one wrong. Anyone who still says Trump is a peacemaker is a damn fool. Statements like this are in full alignment with the absolute worst warmongers in Washington like John Bolton or Lindsey Graham. Anyway, that's where we're at right now. That's the trajectory the U.S. empire has us on. An act of genocide and ethnic cleansing in Gaza, the threat of another extermination campaign in Lebanon, and acceleration toward a direct war of unimaginable horror with Iran. These psychos must be stopped.